Stacks back, school phase MTG. So I'm doing something a little different this time than what I'm normally doing, which is beating face with crazy jank decks. Um, I'm still doing that. I'm still doing that. Don't worry. But I just wanted to engage you guys in some discussion uh, for a change. So I'm going to be discussing the big elephant in the MTG community room right now, which is the companions. It's it's crazy right now. You know, companions are blowing through the whole, you know, all of MTG, all every format. Um, they're shaking up everything. Um, a lot of people are calling for them to be banned. A lot of people are saying it was a stupid concept. Uh, Mark, Mark Rosewater is getting beat up on on Twitter. And um, I just want to offer a constructive opinion about the companions. Um, in case you don't know what the companions are, because I may have some viewers that don't know what companions are. They're, they're these lovely cards, these 10 cards right here on the screen with me. Um, they're creatures and they have printed on them deck constructing um limitations that you have to follow and if you follow those limitations then they get to start in what i call the friend zone um basically it's exile you you reveal them at the start of the game and they stay in the exile zone and you can cast them whenever you choose to cast them um, but your deck your deck has to be built to meet the requirements that's printed on them um so everybody's going crazy over these things right now and like i said a lot of people want them to be banned and i don't really think that that's necessarily fair so i'm gonna, I'm gonna say that i i don't have a problem with the companions in the overall sense but in a specific sense i do have a, a issue with some of them and the concept overall so i'm gonna break it down this video down into to two different um things we're going to talk about here and that's the the concept of companions and the execution of companions so the concept of the companion cards to me it's fine it's inherently um it presents some issues with the game of magic via what the biggest problem everybody's talking about is the eighth card so basically if you're playing a companion you start out with an eighth card which is a extreme advantage over your opponent if they're not playing a companion and it severely punishes the player that's not playing a companion and they have to take a mulligan because now they're gonna start with at most six cards and you start with eight. Um, the also, the extra added benefit of, of having a companion is, as we all know, you get to start with a card that is central to your deck and you automatically have access to it whenever you need to have access to it. And you don't have to worry about not drawing it. So that's also a big plus to playing the, playing the companions. So I guess from the player standpoint, the person who is playing the companion, those are the pros for that player. Um, the cons for that player though, is that they have to adhere to the, the companion limitations that's printed on the companion. So, I mean, like if you're playing Garuda, you can only have, uh, what, is, what does he say? Uh, they can only have uh, creature cards with even converted mana cards. I just want to make sure it didn't say uh, all permanent. So yeah, they, they can only have creatures with uh, even mana costs, which can prevent, it could it can create some deck building uh, limitations that can uh, make for a subpar or less optimal build of a deck. Um, you would think so anyway. Um, I think it's more of a problem in the eternal formats because the eternal formats have a, a lot more cards available to construct with. But in the standard environment where um, the card pool is much more limited, um, the decks are pretty much all going to be the same. So that is a con for the person that's playing the, the companion in standard. Um, it's, a, it's a pro for me as a opponent because if my opponent shows up and they're playing a Garuda build, and they reveal Garuda. I see Garuda um, before the start of the game. Um, now I know that I know what they're playing, and that that deck build is going to be very linear and standard because the card pool is so small. Um, but like I said, in a in an eternal format, it would be much more of a problem because the the card um, cards available are, are much broader. Um, so at least me as an opponent going against somebody playing a companion deck in standard. I know what the deck is. If you do your your meta education, you're you're educated on what decks are being played in standard, what decks are hot. You're, you're familiarized with the list. Then if somebody shows up and you see their companion, you know exactly what you what they're playing. You can 
um, strategize your sequencing according to what it is that they're playing because you already know what they're playing. So it puts you in a better position to be able to stop whatever it is that they're doing. So I think that that is a pro that people are not really acknowledging when it comes to the companions. You as the opponent, you already know what your opponent is playing. You, If you're familiar with the meta and the decks, then you already know what they, what, what's in the deck, what they're playing. You already know what to expect. You can pretty much map out the turns that they're going to have in your head so that you better can you can better strategize what it is that you're going to do and how you're going to respond to whatever it is that you know you already know what they're trying to do um on the flip side of that though um as a concept the the companion cards i think uh they were fine as a concept but then when it came to the execution of it it kind of went array because to me in my mind the con the concept of companion should be a creature that um offers help to my deck okay so take for instance zerta zerta makes all activations cost two less that is that's providing my deck help my idea of my deck is my deck but if I play Zerta, now Zerta is my companion. It's coming in and it's gonna help me because it's gonna make all my activations cheaper. My deck isn't necessarily built around Zerta. My, de my deck can function without Zerta, okay? Now, when you go to a creature like Garuda, where Garuda is the main engine of the deck, Garuda is the deck. So that presents a whole nother problem. So the power level of the companions overall is is greatly skewed because not all of them are crazy dominating um as some of the others so if somebody plays garuda you feel awful if somebody plays a lurus you feel awful if they play a Urion, you feel awful but if somebody plays a Gigantha, you don't really care if somebody plays a zerda you don't really care you don't even see lutri i mean uh <laughs> what, what is that um karuga Karuga is, he's okay, he's card advantage, he's, I mean, he's an eighth card, and then when he comes in, he's going to draw some more cards, so he's guaranteed card advantage, so he's like borderline, he's not really a build around, but he provides a significant card advantage um, that it can be um, greatly depressing to have to play against that. So what I'm saying is, I don't think people have a, a issue with the companions overall, I think they have an issue with specific companions because the power level is so skewed between the companions. So, I mean, I don't I don't really think people have an issue with Umari or Gigantha or Zerda, but people really have a problem with Garuda or Lurus or Urion because those companions are deck build arounds. You if you create a companion that has the ability to have a deck build around them then that becomes an issue because that player has an access to, they have access to that companion anytime that they choose they can play that companion on curve or they can wait until it's most optimal time in the game to play it and they can play it and greatly swing the game in their favor because that card is always allowed it's always available to them so when they were designing the companions i think it would have been less of an issue if they would have designed the companions more along the lines of umari or Gigantha, or Zerda, or Lutri. These companions, they they are just, they're there to aid you. They're not central to the deck. They're not, you know, build arounds. If all the companions would have been like that, like, hey, I can, this is my little buddy. I can call in to come in and help me, then that would have been fine. But when you get a Garuda or a Lurus that is the central engine to the deck and the opponent has access to it, as soon as they want to cast it then that's an issue because it takes away the the uh, the variance of the game if you will because an, an opponent can just ramp up and play Garuda on turn four consistently every game and then that's their main engine I mean the game unless you have a, the ability to interact with that right then at that specific time then the game is pretty much over and I, I get it. A lot of people, they will say, well, Stacks, you know, you you can play uh, Gaff, Digger's, Gaff Digger's Cage or you can play, you know, Removal and, and kill it as soon as it comes in or, yeah, I hear all that. But let's be honest, nobody's running Gaff Digger's Cage 
in the main deck or hardly anybody is. I mean, it's just not a card that's optimal for any deck build to run main deck. It's it's totally a sideboard card. Um, and if I have to lose to Garuda in game one because I don't have Gav Dicker's Cage main, main board in my deck, then when I go to sideboard, I have to hope that I draw in, draw out my Gaff Dicker's Cage that I just sided in, okay? My opponent has a guaranteed turn four, turn five Garuda. I have to hope that I get my sideboard card. I can't side in Gaff Dicker's Cage and put it in the friend zone, okay? So that's the issue with that. And Gaff Dicker's Cage doesn't even do anything else with my deck. I shouldn't be forced to have to run that. Bad answers to great cards is losing magic. Yes, there's ways to interact with it. Yes, there's ways to remove it um, in most cases because if you're playing against a lures deck, we all know how complicated it can be to remove lures. And the opponent has access to him whenever they need to have access to him. So I think that that is the problem with the companions. I don't think that the companion as a concept was is completely busted. Yes, it, it provides a... Um, an advantage that you know you just can't get around an opponent having if they're playing a companion but i think that the concept of it was is, is fine because the trade-off is fine my opponent gets to have an eighth card but their deck is limited to be built um according to what that companion says the deck has to be built as and me as the opponent i know what my opponent is playing at least in the standard environment i know what my opponent is playing because the deck options are so limited all the best cards that are able to go into that deck are going to go in there and if i study the meta and i pay attention to what decks are what decks are hot what's going on i know what my opponent is playing i know how to respond i know how to react but the adverse effect of it is the the, the companions that were printed that are game engines instead of game aids you know game assistants if you will um that's the problem so the companion being the the one Yurion and Lurus and Garuda and even Obosh uh, to a degree, but Obosh isn't as big of a, of a problem um, because you know by the time they the the black and red deck gets to five mana, if you let them get to five mana, they've probably already killed you anyway. Um, a Rakdos deck by the time they get to five mana, so um, <laughs> it's not really that big of an issue for Obosh. But um, yeah, Garuda, Lurus, and Yurion, yeah, those are some problems. Um, and then the rest of them, I think, are okay. Um, they, they just assist you with whatever it is that you're doing. Karuga, maybe, not now, he's not as big of an issue now, but maybe in the future with future sets, we never know what they may bring. Karuga may actually be end up being a problem. Um, you know, maybe some, some bounce shenanigans and recast or, you know, whatever. Uh, or, or some flickering going on or whatever we have flickering now you know he can he can be flickered now but he he hasn't been citralized to to any builds but the other ones have the 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 garuda lures and yurion are very central to the decks that they are in so i think that that's the main issue with the companions let me know what you think about the companions do you think they should be banned um do you disagree with what i'm saying do you feel like uh, mark rosewater really made a mistake or um, do you think is game design made a mistake? Let me know what you think about these cards. Um, comment it down below. Please remember to like and subscribe. And uh, stay tuned for more jank and crazy videos coming soon. All right. See you guys next time.